We are continuing to look at the factors that affect decision making. We looked in the previous video at the approaches to decision making. So we looked at rational model, bounded rationality, and intuitive decision making. Now we're going to look at types of decisions. So when you go to solve a problem, it can be a structured problem. It is straightforward. It is familiar. It's an easily defined problem. And so we have a mechanism in place for solving it. So for example, let's suppose you are Best Buy and you are dealing with the return of a smartphone. This is a program decision. So we have a routine solution to it. We probably have procedures in place in terms of steps to respond to the issue. So if you are returning a smartphone, you have to fill out a form in terms of why the return. We also have rules or constraints, what can be done or not done. So let's suppose that what's being returned is an iPhone 13 and just two days ago they released an iPhone 14. So this person only bought it, uh, you know, a week ago, but it's not the newest model. So what are the rules or constraints in terms of how we can deal uh, with this return? Does the individual get a new version of the phone um, when they return? Let's say it's broken or has some kind of camera issue. Uh, do they get the new iPhone 14 instead of the 13? Do they get the, can they get the 14, but they have to pay the difference, a couple extra hundred bucks to upgrade to the newest version? What are the rules in terms of what we can do uh, to help the customer or what we can't? And we probably have some policies, some general guidelines for making the decision. Maybe the focus of our organization is that the customer is always satisfied or happy when they leave. And so because of that, ultimately what matters is, is that the customer gets something. Um, and our last check in the process, our control is to make sure that the customer is satisfied. Maybe it's about fair and equity. What is fair and equitable, you know, in terms of how one person, how we would deal with one person coming in um, with their phone versus another person. So we would have general policies for how we would deal. But with structured problems, we have program decisions. We have a routine solution for how we deal with them. This is compared to an unstructured problem. Unstructured problems are new or unusable. Unu I can't speak. New or unu unusual. Um, we don't have a clear solution for them. So it's something new, we haven't seen it before, or it's overly complicated, uh, we don't, and so um, it doesn't fit nicely into categories. So here we require custom solutions uh, in those scenarios. When we look at our decision-making, so we said we need to look at the approach to decision-making, rational, bounded, more intuition-based. We need to look at the type of decision, so structured or unstructured. And then the other thing we want to consider here is the level of uncertainty in the decision. How much certainty do we have? So certainty is where we can make accurate decisions because we know the outcome of each choice, each solution we could pick from, is known. So if we do X, then Y will happen. We know that. If we raise the price a dollar, then we know sales will drop by 10%. Are we then willing to do that given we know we are certain about the consequences? What about the risk? So here we talk about risk. We're talking about our ability to estimate the likelihood of each outcome. So perhaps it's not as clear cut as if we do A, then B happens because life is complicated. So it might be that we could choose as our organization, we could choose to produce more of our product. We could choose to produce less. And ultimately though, what's gonna happen to us depends not only on our decision to make more or less, but on what's happening globally in terms of the market price of whatever we make. So it's quite possible we could produce more, but then the market price goes up. Do we know the likelihood that the price will go up? So maybe there's a 20% likelihood the price will go up. And if we then have certainty, which is we know that if the price goes up, we know we'll make more money. 
So we can look at risk and we can look at certainty. If we produce more, 20% chance the market price will go up. That's the risk. The certainty is we know the outcome that if the price goes up and we produce more, we know we'll make more money. Comparatively, if we produce more, there's an 80% chance that the market price is going to go down. So that's the risk. And we know with certainty the outcome if the market price goes down and we produce more, there's no change in our profit. Uncertainty is when you don't know the likelihood of an outcome and, and you don't have certainty either. So we don't know the outcomes and we don't know the probability of the impact it will have. So how well can you deal with uncertainty? Well, there are some models for making decisions with uncertainty. There is what is called Maximax, Maximin, and Minimax. So in Maximax, we are going to take the optimistic approach. We are going to look at the best case scenario and from the best case scenario, choose the route that will be best for us. The maxi min says that we are more risk averse, we are more pessimistic. So we're gonna consider the worst outcome and then choose the solution or alternative that minimizes those negative effects. So we're gonna maximize the benefit to us given that minimum um, payoff or minimum scenario. There's also what is called mini max. This is risk neutral, it doesn't assume optimistic or pessimistic. And it's about limiting the amount of regret that you have from the decision you made. So when you're thinking back in terms of, oh, we should have done something instead, we want to minimize that, that regret. So let's look at a scenario to help us understand. All right, you are Shell. You are trying to make decisions about expansion. Large expansion for your business, small expansion in terms of production of oil, or you could do nothing. At the same time, we have market prices for oil changing. They could go up. They could have no change. They could fall. So the maxi max approach for decision making when you have this uncertainty is to look at the best possible scenario. So the best possible scenario for us is that oil prices will go up. If oil prices go up, so maximum option, and we want the max of that. So what is the best scenario given that optimistic um, outcome? So if oil prices rise, what's best for our company is that we have done a large expansion. We'll make in this payoff matrix, nine billion. So under maxi max, we would do a large expansion. In comparison, maxi min, right? We take that very conservative approach. We are pessimistic about the outcome. And so we say, okay, worst case scenario. Worst case scenario, prices fall. What is the best option for us? How do we maximize the benefit to us given this minimum or worst case scenario? Well, given the options here of large expansion that would lose us 20 billion because we have to build the infrastructure, but then prices fall and we can't really recoup that. Or small expansion, again, building the infrastructure, but not as expensive. We can't recoup it, we lose 10 billion. Or we can do nothing and we lose a billion because we're selling the same quantity, but at a lower price. So in this case, in that pessimistic view, oil prices fall, the best outcome for us is to do nothing. Okay. The third approach, the mini max, requires us to build a regret table or a table of our losses. So to do the mini max approach, we are going to be risk neutral. So we are not going to assume a pessimistic outcome. We're not going to assume a, a negative outcome. We're going to consider all of them. And our point here is to minimize the regret or loss under all these conditions. So how do we go about doing that? How do we build this regret table? Well, we look at oil prices rising and we say, what's the best outcome if things are great? 
Well, the best outcome was oil prices rise. We did a large expansion. We make $9 billion. Well, what if oil prices rise and we don't do a large expansion? Well, if we do the large expansion, there's no regret. Nine minus nine, zero. We got the best we could. But if oil prices rise and we did a small expansion, not a large, then we could have made nine billion. We're only going to make five. And so the regret is four billion dollars. If oil prices rise, we could have made nine billion. If we did nothing, we get one. And so the regret here is eight billion. So we're creating this regret table to show what we gave up. If there is that particular outcome, if oil prices rise, which decision we make, which one's going to have the most regret. So if we chose the best option, there's no regret. And then we can look at the difference. All right, let's keep going. What if there is no change? If there is no change in prices, then the best outcome is the one that doesn't lose us money. So it would have been to do nothing. So if we did nothing, the best outcome was to do nothing. There is no regret. If though, the best outcome was to do nothing and we did a large expansion, then zero minus a negative 10, the loss, the regret is 10 billion. If the best outcome was to do nothing and instead we did a small expansion, then the regret is $2 billion that we have lost. So notice that these losses appear on the regret table as positive because by definition, the table shows loss. Okay. Then we look at the scenario where oil prices fall. If oil prices fall, the best choice for us would have been to do nothing. Yes, the prices go down. We're still producing the same quantity. We're going to lose some money, but it's only a billion dollars. So if we do nothing, then we have negative one minus a negative one. They cancel each other out, zero. But if instead we had done a large expansion, instead of doing nothing, then we go from that nothing, which was the minus one, minus the negative 20. And so the regret we have here is the extra $19 billion that we lost by choosing large expansion over do nothing. Same thing with the small expansion. We could have just lost 1 billion, but because we went with small expansion, we lose 10 billion. So the actual regret is nine. Now this is the mini max approach. So once we have our regret table, we need to look at the maximum regret in these different scenarios. So if oil prices rise, the maximum regret is eight. If there is no change in oil prices, the maximum regret is 10. If oil prices fall, the maximum regret is 19. We want to minimize the maximum regret. So what are we going to choose in the mini max approach? We are going to go with the minimum here. So we're going to go with eight. And so that means that the approach we're going to take is to do nothing. So we take the maximum losses and we minimize them, mini max, to help us make the decision for uncertainty. So one approach looks at, you know, we're more of a risk taker because that means bigger reward. That's the maxi max. One more, we're more risk averse. So we're concerned about that downfall. We'll look at worst case scenario and then the mini max, which is more neutral. It doesn't put a weight on the different outcomes. It considers all of them and it's simply looking at minimizing the regret.